Can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, I don't know what time uh, looks like it's in Europe, right? So, uh, uh, I'm in USA, and uh, I know it's uh, 3 o'clock in the morning. And uh, my presentation is a study for uh, in vehicle network and the new with with architecture by new IP. So this is my uh, 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 work two years ago, and uh, there is a paper here and. Um, uh, it has more details, and uh, basically, what is the new IP? Question: The first question people will ask. So the the new IP was uh, proposed in the ITU, and uh, it's a kind of initiative uh, to study the um, uh, the next generation IP protocol for future internet. And here uh, I list some uh, uh, proposals and. Uh, 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 papers. Uh, new IP is uh, compared with the uh, current IP. It has a couple of uh, um, uh, important changes. Uh, first of all, is, uh, its address. Uh, we are not like current uh, IPv6. Uh, it's fixed the length and the type. But uh, with new IP, we will support a uh, flexible and free choice address. For example, you can uh, have IPv6 as well and also other type of address. Uh, second is that we introduce contract. Contract is a kind of uh, the information carried in the uh, user packet. It can be used for the KPI guarantee service and also for the uh, programmability for the network. Uh, last one is a uh, payload. We can have some uh, 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 feature called qualitative payload, uh, but it's not in, uh, important here. Uh, for us, we just uh, focusing the free choice of addressing and the programmability for the network. Uh, why we propose this? Uh, because for future internet, we, we, we everyone knows that the internet currently still only supports the best effort service, uh, which I, we think is uh, far from the requirement for future internet. Uh, as a comparis comparison, GPP has uh, developed 5G uh, for more than 10 years. And uh, there is some similarity between uh, 5G and the future net, uh, future internet as our vision. And it has a similar purpose and the requirements. And also for uh, 5G, the uh, uh, fundamental solution is the new radio. We call 5G NR, also the uh, SBA architecture. And for future internet, we think the new IP uh, could be one of the uh, protocol and uh, it has some uh, detailed uh, technology associated with that. For example, the uh, 5G have a new, uh, has a new spectrum and the new IP has a uh, flexible addressing and uh, 5G has MIMO. Uh, we have a uh, network connector multi pass end to end. Also, the uh, 5G needs a new protocol stack at UE. And uh, we also need a new, new protocol stack. So 5G has a new QoS supported. Uh, we have an in-band syncing to support the new QoS uh, guaranteed service. And uh, 5G has a grant-free uh, dynamic scheduling for the uh, QoS. And we have uh, also need uh, uh, a much more complicated queuing and scheduling than best effort service, like we are using uh, in right. Uh, Current internet. So for the uh, uh, this uh, study, we focus in the uh, user case of uh, uh, new IP used for the in vehicle network. Why we choose this? Uh, everyone knows that the autonomous uh, car uh, is uh, uh, is developing very fast. 
and for the the advanced the car right the um, the internal network is much more complicated than before we could have we could easily have more than uh, 100 sensors connected together and we have a lot of uh, legacy uh, technology used there but uh, none of them is uh, suitable for the uh, future uh, uh, usage uh, for example, the Tesla has already uh, used the Ethernet in their car, and uh, and some uh, other uh, advanced technology also in the um, uh, developing, such as the TSM. And the new IP is a uh, uh, we think the new IP will be converged uh, for different technologies, and uh, we have a new IP in in the car. We have a new IP switch, and the can connect the different gateway uh, together and connect to the uh, uh, inbound computer. Also, it can um, uh, uh, connect with outside with the uh, wireless. And uh, here we use a V2X just uh, borrow a LAN from 3GPP. Actually, in 3GPP, V2X is just very uh, narrowly defined for the uh, radio sites. But uh, the, for user case and application point, we, we, V2X is so much more wider. And uh, to achieve the uh, requirements of uh, v, V2X, especially the end-to-end -end latency guarantee, uh, we need to uh, enable new IP4 from inside the car network to the uh, 5G backhaul network to even to uh, internet. This is a new architecture. And for the uh, uh, end device side, uh, to support new IP, we also need to change the protocol stack. The protocol uh, basically uh, uh, will combine the um, uh, multi-pass support and the uh, priority queue support together. Uh, and uh, in addition to that, we still want to keep the backward compatibility. For example, if you are still in uh, only care about the best effort service, you can still use the old socket. And uh, quite a lot of changes. Uh, major change is a single process and the multiple control, multiple pass control in a protocol stack. Uh, the single process is uh, to process the sing signal embedded in the user packet. And the multi-pass control is to control multi-pass for one um, application. And uh, this is, this side is a stack for the uh, 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 device with wireless uh, of 5G. For example, you, you have a, a peer DP protocol below, and uh, we can also work in together. So this is uh, topology, uh, network topology for the uh, 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 new IVM architecture. And we, we support uh, two type of architecture, either uh, a spine tree architecture and uh, all the ring uh, architecture. And uh, we support all type of legacy uh, car network protocol such as the CAN, Flex Ray, and the LIN. Also, we of course support the Ethernet. And the all those legacy protocol are kind of layer two protocol. All those can be converged on IP layer. So this is a new IP layer. And we also can interworking with uh, uh, legacy protocol, for example, flex ray is a typical one, and we can have uh, add new layer in the uh, flex ray uh, device and communicate with uh, uh, main board or even to outside. Right now, to do that in the current uh, car network, it is very hard. Okay, so next uh, I'm going to talk about uh, our uh, modeling and the simulation uh, by INET and OMNET++. Uh, I'm going to talk about modeling architecture in band syncing process, uh, traffic classification and the queuing and the scheduling. 
Here is a, a modeling uh, network topology traffic and the service. This is a kind of a ring architecture we are going to uh, simulate. And uh, we have a four uh, uh, zone gateway. And to simulate the maximum uh, latency, we cut the ring. Uh, that's why the, we have just uh, one segment. And uh, all are uh, switch or rotor connected. And all those connect through Ethernet bus to different uh, ECU or the uh, computers. And each uh, router will have this uh, similar uh, uh, architecture, ingress and uh, egress. So ingress, we have a uh, uh, different uh, marker for classification. And this uh, not only applied to the uh, uh, router, it also applied to all ECU and the computer. Because in our um, uh, philosophy and the uh, service will be initiated from end point, and the user can decide uh, what type of service they want and what what is the uh, SLA they want, and uh, then the, they will know that the status of the service requirement. So that's why all this classification can should apply to all uh, end device. And this one will be uh, also applied to from uh, end device to router. This is the egress part. So egress, we have a meter, uh, we have a, a different queues, but uh, we only use a three, uh, actually three queues is good enough for simulation. So uh, we have a, a four uh, a four, a three type of service actually four type of service. So uh, this is a latency guaranteed service, and this is a bandwidth guaranteed service, and this is a best effort service. For the latency guaranteed service, we have two subtypes. One is called scheduled traffic, another is real-time traffic. So the difference with these two is that scheduled traffic is that uh, uh, before uh, uh, the uh, traffic a path through, I know when the path traffic will come to my router. This will be used for the, uh, majorly for the uh, uh, sensor, for example, the periodically detect something, then you, you can use those sensor data as a scheduled traffic. We can provide the guaranteed service for that. The latency will be minim minimized and the jitter can be also minimized. So for this uh, kind of things, we it apply to synchronize or asynchronous communication. It can be used for critical sensor and control data because this uh, cannot be uh, delayed and uh, critical for the safety. So for this kind of things, uh, uh, traffic, uh, the latency will be most precise and the network guarantees the end-to-end -end la uh, bounded latency. What do we want from uh, uh, end user side is that uh, CIR com committed the information rate and the peak information rate. We can guarantee the bandwidth will be uh, enough for committed the information rate. For this kind of service, the jitter almo almost zero and the packet uh, loss almost zero. It is congestion free. Never got congestion, no matter how high uh, through uh, 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 how much uh, traffic for best effort, those traffic will always uh, uh, get through first. So it is a uh, lossless queuing, and which means the uh, queue depth is minimized. Also, we can support multi paths to prevent a drop from the physical failure. If, for example, if some link failure, we can have a multi path setup to guarantee that packet is even not lost. So for the real-time traffic of LGS, uh, it will be used for the, uh, uh, sometimes that, that uh, uh, for example, the um, uh, some burst of the uh, uh, data coming, uh, for example, the instantaneous uh, 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 sensor data or the control data such as the operating uh, uh, a car, those uh, information will be 
uh, treated as real-time traffic. For this kind of uh, traffic, it, it, is, uh, it is still we can guarantee the uh, uh, minimized latency and the jitter uh, uh, will be higher than this one. And uh, also we can guarantee the packet loss is zero. So the uh, bandwidth guarantee. Bandwidth guarantee means that as long as you tell me the CRR and the PRR, I will uh, guarantee you that uh, uh, traffic will all pass through and uh, no congestion. But it latency may be uh, not guaranteed because we have to queue the packet until the resource is, is enough. So best effort traffic means that we, I don't guarantee anything. It will be last one to process. So there's a couple of uh, key uh, features we have uh, changed or implemented in the uh, INET. Uh, first one is that uh, in and singling process, which is used for the uh, uh, two purposes. One is that reservation of the uh, resource. Second is the uh, uh, dynamic control of the uh, uh, flow. So we have to change everything from host to router and from uh, application to TCP UDP. For example, we have to add the timestamp, CRR, PRR, and the reservation status to packet parameters. Actually, we don't have to change the packet format. We, we can use, uh, this is uh, one of the good things of the Omnet. The packet parameter is very useful. We can carry it there. It will be same as the packet format change. Also, TCP UDP application, we have to modify to uh, process priority traffic and uh, also the interface. So at the receiver side, we have to measure the delay and uh, also compare with the estimation. We have a detailed theoretical estimation for uh, for the delay. We have to compare to see if they are uh, uh, similar. And also we will uh, do the process of reservation status and send back. At router, it's, a, it's a, a, a more work on the routing table side. And first of all, we have to res reserve the resource based on the uh, service request from each flow. And then we have to change the routing table to support the uh, uh, flows which require the special service, which means the uh, uh, key will be changed from prefix to be uh, five tuples of the flow. And uh, the uh, uh, packet is also classified after sending out uh, the uh, end device interface. This is very high level. Uh, I don't go to details. And uh, what's going on? OK, so this is uh, uh, about queuing and the scheduling. So for the uh, 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 study, we experiment uh, two Q and scheduling. Of course, we have other algorithms there, but we didn't uh, write down here. Uh, for the simplicity purpose, uh, we this, the the first Q algorithm is uh, part Q plus DWDR. Very simple. The uh, uh, the Omnet already supported. Uh, we some changes, uh, but not sig significant. So the second algorithm is that we introduce a new algorithm, uh, which called the cyclic queuing plus PQ plus DWDR. Uh, the uh, major uh, difference is that on top of the first queuing and scheduling, we apply the timer into each uh, queue. For example, this is uh, scheduled traffic. Uh, this is real-time traffic. Each one will have a uh, allocated time slot. Those time slots will be associated with the reserved bandwidth. And uh, then we can apply each uh, uh, queue for the uh, dedicated time slot to be served. Uh, also, we have to consider the uh, guard band time interval. Uh, 
to each queue. For example, for the uh, uh, real time uh, traffic and the bandwidth traffic, there must be have a uh, God band interval introduced the, in such a way that we can guarantee that uh, uh, the high level, uh, high priority traffic can be passed through even. Uh, 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 no, 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 sorry, no priority traffic can pass through even uh, uh, there's a, a new packet coming. Uh, so uh, I think that's it uh, for my uh, presentation. Well, thanks a lot. And apologies for this stupid time slot <laughs> you got. I was not aware of your time zone. I'm really sorry. No problem. No problem. <laughs> okay. So, anyone has some question regarding this great presentation? Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, what is the relation with uh, automotive Ethernet? The automotive in, uh, internet or ethernet automotive ethernet ethernet okay so ethernet yeah. ethernet right yeah yeah so our uh, protocol is above the ethernet means that below it can be ethernet or the uh, can or other kind of protocol it doesn't matter mm -hmm. I think the question was related to what what is the relationship of your protocol regard to TSN so time service. Okay, that's a good question. Your yeah, TSN yeah. is uh, at uh, uh, Ethernet level. We are above. Mm. I'm sorry. I have a tying question. So uh, in in the last couple of months, we did quite a lot of work on TSN within inter within uh, INET. And some of the terminology that you used are very similar to what is in 802.11 QCI, which would be the TSN Ethernet part. So it's like traffic right. classes. Right, and right. That, yes. And so I'm also confused as to uh, how those two, two things combine. OK, good. So that's a very good question. Actually, that uh, we just are uh, moving all those concepts from the uh, layer 2 to layer 3. Because the layer uh, layer two means that you have to use the Ethernet, but mm -hmm. for example, other type of uh, layer two, you cannot have the TSM feature. Also, for the internet point of view, the IP is uh, uh, much more broader. It can connect at different domains. So the uh, also the information, for example, the uh, user uh, expectation for the. Uh, uh, traffic can uh, for the service can be carried in IP layer and across the different domain to reach uh, its end. That's why we uh, select uh, layer three. Oh, I see. So the idea is to collect all sorts of different traffic from flex rail in whatever, and then uh, feed that to the backbone uh, together in a TSN yes, kind of way. Yes, sort of way. yes, okay. yes, yes. It's converted layer. Yes. I see. So, uh, would you be using like ten based T one S as? Yeah, no uh, problem. No, it is yeah. agnostic to layer two. As long as the layer two mm -hmm. uh, 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 driver is controlled by us. I see. So I I I, I get a better understanding of what's this for then. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Any manufacturers already buying in? Do you have like uh, pilots going on? Uh, that, that's a production <laughs> issue. <laughs> uh, we, we yeah, we just propose uh, uh, provide this technology. And we uh, verify it by this uh, experiment, and uh, it works. Then, it of course it can be uh, used for real products. Yes. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nicolas, come on. Oh yeah. So um. Um, I, I, I have a question uh, with regards to, well, I don't know if I had it, but what's, what's, like the, what's the motivation for, for this particular study? I, I found it interesting, but uh, what I wanted to find out was, was there like a motivation, a problem that you are trying to solve with this, with this study? 
Oh, of course, yeah. The, the, the motivation behind is uh, we, we call the new IP. We okay. just uh, study for the future internet. What is uh, the, the uh, number one uh, things uh, we try to solve is the service uh, uh, provided by internet. No matter where you are, no matter what you're using, if you are using internet right now, the only service uh, generally is only best effort. You cannot uh, get any uh, guarantee things, but those uh, service is very critical for the some user case like V2X. And uh, because V2X, you cannot tolerate any packet loss or delay. And for the autonomous driving, right now the sensor data and the uh, uh, control a huge number of data right now is uh, more easily exceeding one gig. Think about the can uh, link and the flex array. Those bandwidth only 20 meg, far below than the expectation. But e if you're using Ethernet, you can easily get higher bandwidth, but still you cannot get the guarantee unless you use the TSN. Okay. Yeah, so our, our purpose is kind of a study for the future internet protocol. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. What about the switch fabric? I mean, the routers, switches, any specification there? Any special requirements? S switch fabric doesn't have any new requirement because the uh, the latency stuff thing uh, always happened at uh, the uh, egress. For example, switch fabric, we can assume it's a non-blocking fabric. That's easy to make. Of course, for the ingress side of the uh, switch fabric, you have to control the uh, uh, a resource sharing as well. But normally, that's not a big deal. Thank you. Okay, I, I answer the question. Some people ask, uh, is the new IP part of 3GPP? No, it's not part of 3GPP. Yeah, it's uh, actually, if you guys are searching the new IP, you will see uh, it's a very controversial part right now. But uh, from technology point of view, we think it's very reasonable. And uh, the, the work should be in the uh, IETF, not in 3GPP. 3GPP majorly for, uh, work for the wireless part. Okay, so keep also ask for the new IP for that net. Uh, the, as I, I said, right now the that net definition is that the use the TSN uh, below. It doesn't change the IP layer. Uh, even right now they are trying to do something, but it's still in progress. What is the UHT? I don't know. UHT work to improve congestion control. Okay, so this, our, our work is uh, much more than congestion control because you know the, uh, the, uh, the traditional congestion control is that uh, black box solution, which means that uh, you only change uh, end device, TCP or different algorithm there. The right now they start to uh, change the network device, for example, L4S. But L4S is still very uh, primitive, uh, primitive because it only has a two queue and it cannot uh, uh, treat different flow differently. Our purpose is to go farther because we can completely separate flows and uh, give them different uh, resources. That's why we can provide a guaranteed service. The L4S is uh, the uh, most advanced uh, congestion control algorithm. It cannot provide the guaranteed service. Ultra high support. Okay, so yeah, ultra high support has no problem for our, us because for us is that everything, if you, as long as it's not best effort, you have to tell me what's your CIR and the PIR. As long as you tell me your parameters, I can give you resource. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very good uh, uh, 
uh, information for current AR VR. AR VR right now they they have uh, also a very good user case for this because AR VR normally the uh, uh, it's kind of a requirement for ultra high throughput plus latency sensitive because uh, the latency can cause you dizzy and the uh, user experiments will be disaster and uh, that's that's also one of the reasons the metaverse cannot be very sexy because they focus in the uh, end device part but it uh, try to get some unbelievable experience based on current internet no way because the internet is was designed only support best effort service you cannot provide any other things on top of it if you want to have a better service you have to either use your uh, dedicated line or have your own network. Yes, I said uh, new IP is controversial, but you, if you look, <laughs> search on the news, the uh, controversial from the political point of view, not from technology point of view, okay? <laughs> Okay. A lot of history there, but it's not a technical issue here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Just one question. So, like, there were earlier efforts to bring some quality of service to the internet, like the uh, in-serve integrated services or div serve, but the, these efforts have not caught on really. So, what do you think these efforts failed, and why new IP has better chance of catching on? Yeah, of course. Area. That's a, that's a very good. Um, uh, uh, people keep asking this. Yes, uh, deep surf uh, was not. I, I can. I I don't want to say it's fair. And um, you know the the, the internet that has developed more than uh, 45, 50, uh, 40 years. The 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 essence is that first of all, uh, the user case. If the user case uh, is not that uh, uh, uh uh, hard to satisfy, for example, the latency or bandwidth guarantee. The service provider always try to use the simplest way to solve it. For example, use a, a higher um, uh, fiber to replace old fiber, which can get less chance to be congested. However, uh, recently, for example, ARVR, the in-vehicle network, right now the guaranteed service become uh, more and more uh, attractive because uh, you sometimes even with very high band uh, link bandwidth, you still can you still can be congested because of the burst. Tape. So uh, in the future, more and more such user case will come up. And uh, our purpose is that on top of the current internet architecture, uh, we try to pro provide a kind of end-to-end -end guaranteed service. That's our purpose. Guaranteed service means that you even have to change your UE, the protocol stack. Otherwise, we cannot uh, achieve that target. Automotive user case. Automotive user case uh, relate to this is very easy to think, right? For example, the uh, in the paper I have analyzed the uh, maximum latency allowed for uh, for some uh, 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 scenario. For example, uh, uh, the speed of the car. For example, when you see something, you have to uh, uh, break your car then. Uh, how long time the system can tolerate that uh, control data? It's very short. It's uh, it's very short. So that's why the uh, latency and the packet loss become so critical. If without such service, uh, the the you may lose your control and uh, have a safety issue. That's why the uh, in vehicle network right now more and more people think about using the. Uh, uh, Ethernet, uh, your TSN, because the Ethernet cannot uh, have such uh, functionality. Why latency and packet loss? Because we use a uh, different queuing scheduling and uh, reservation.
Well, I guess we should close now this. It's very interesting and I encourage everyone to discuss it even in, in the Discord channel. Uh, I would like to thank you for the presentation and then we are waiting for the next presenter here. Thank you very much. Thank you.